How you doing? Hey guys, my last day here in Gifu, and what I'm eating today also has a lot to do with the local famous Nagata River. What I'm about to have is known as one of the most precious, expensive, delicious fish in Japan, the ayu. The ayu fish is also known as the sweet fish because many people say it has a sweet taste and a sweet fragrance, almost like a watermelon. I never had this before, I'm so excited to try it, but before we get to that fish, we're going fishing for another fish. Today we're actually not fishing for the IU fish, we're fishing for the dojo fish, which is also a really popular fish in this region. This is Kentaro, and he's the youngest fisherman in this very famous river. So all the fishermen here are really well known, he's the youngest one. You must be good. <laughs> all right, we're gonna change into the fishing suit. Oh, so it's no machines allowed, no only machines. manual fish traps. Yeah, manual. The fish size? Yeah, fish size. I'll give you a catch. Okay. Yes, it's, uh, it's this big? Yeah. So we're, we're, we're mainly going after uh, the doju fish, which are small, kind of like mini little unagis. So the fish, what they're trying to do is trying to reach warmer water, so they're trying to swim upstream. So this is his trap, look at this. So it's a two by four basically, and he made that little dam, so he made his own little current. Uh-huh. Oh! Oh, wow, okay. So, so here's, here's how it works. He made this little man-made stream. The fish is trying to swim up this like tiny bitty waterfall, but they can't. So they come to the side, and he put a little brick here so the fish can basically swim on top of these rocks into that little trap and it's right there. So let's see, let's see what we have. Okay. Oh. All right, there's tiny little fish in here. This is all handmade. Oh, oh, there's about a dozen in here. Okay, there's some dojo, there's some other types of fish in here. Hajika? So all the fish in this river, I mean, you can see the bottom of this river. So all the fish, they're feasting on like usually algae or moss that's in this river. It's so clean. And that's why the fish here um, taste incredible. Oh, that's the adult. Yeah, adult. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So those fish, it's not like they're baby fish. They're actually, that's how big they get. They get to be like looking like a little warm sized fish. That's as big as they get. Okay, well, I mean, this is uh, definitely a um, very interesting experience. Like, I guess this is the first time I'm ever in a river that's this clean before. Can you drink the water? Can you drink the water? Yeah? Woo. Tastes like water from a bottle. Wow. That's extremely clean. Can I just come and bottle this and sell it? It'd be like, <laughs> Japan River water. I'll put it in a nice bottle and charge it like 10 bucks a bottle. Oh, this is refreshingly beautiful. Mm. Wow, borderline sweet. Can't wait to taste the fish from this. Oh, arigatsugaimasu. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Very educational, thank you. After a little fishing, we're back here at Kawaramachi and the eating begins. Look at this. One of them is just fried in a little bit of salt and batter. One of them is fried in salt, batter, and vinegar. These are actually the normal size for these fish. They don't get much bigger. This is just the size they come in. And they're a very big part of the diet, contribute to the nutrition of the people who lives in these mountains and by these rivers. And there's three different types of fish we have in here. We have the dojo, which 
Again, it looks like a smaller Unagi. We have the Kajika, which is the bigger one with the fins all spread open. And then we have the Orori. All right, let's start off with the Hajime Dojo. This is the, probably the most expensive uh, and supposedly the best tasting of the bunch. Mmm. Oh, that's great. Really, really soft. It's almost like you can't taste a single bone in here. This is cooked perfectly. Slight crunch on the outside and a little bit of salt and pepper. It's just a clean, good tasting fish. This is the Kajika. All right, this one, you can definitely taste, there's like little bones in here. For sure has like a, like a mellower taste to it. There's a better overall mouth feel to it. But I like the crunch and crunchy texture of the bones. And this is the Ordori. This is a tiny little minnow looking fish. Wow. Fish aside, I love this way of cooking it. Wow. Here a little bit of soy brings out the sweetness tiny bit of vinegar. Oh, this is absolutely delicious. Mm. That's yummy. I will eat that over rice. This would be a really good rice dish. This, I think is perfect on its own. Like just eat dish and nothing else, but this is a saucy dish. I think these two types of cooking, this way is definitely my favorite. I can see why this ingredient is so treasured by the people here. And you can also taste how clean really you can. Taste how clean the water is by eating this fish. Every single bite I've taken, nothing grimy, nothing like sandy about it. I mean, these fish literally taste like when I drink that water from the river. Pure, good, clean meat. That's all it is. After this, let's go eat some sweet fish. All right, the moment I've been waiting for. I went fishing, I tried some of the other fish, which are all delicious. Now we're on to a full IU course dinner. Ow. I'm in a restaurant called Izumiya, and my chef Izumi said, Nice to meet you, konnichiwa. And we're gonna be cooking one of the best quality IU fish here. And this is one of the best places in Japan you can get this fish done. Arigatouzaimasu. Grab a seat. Okay, so I'm beginning my Ayu feast. This is so exciting. Let's, let me tell you what we got. We got a little tiny fish from the river. We got an Ayu sushi, and this is the traditional type of sushi back when like sushi wasn't on rice, you know? And this is not like the two twigs in a package. We got a female Ayu on the left. You see the little egg sac right here. And then we have the male Ayu on the right. And we also have a breast stick stuffed with Ayu cream. And then we have just a salad. Not everything has to be ayu. Itadaki mas. Little big fish. All right, you need a little fish jerky. Here we go. First taste of ayu. Start with the female. And it's recommended that I don't eat this whole thing like in one bite, which like is hard because it's like so tiny, but just to nibble on it a little bit. Wow. The ayu fish, the fish itself, it has almost like a floral accent to it. Perfect with a little fermented miso. It's not just delicious, it's beautiful. Wow. she Disney. This is the mayo piece. And the ayu definitely has a difference between if it was farmed or wild. And I'm eating wild ayu today. Mmm. The texture is just it's almost like butter. You could definitely spread this thing on a piece of bread. I feel like the male piece is tiny bit less creamy than the female. This is a lovely outlook on what's to come. Next dish we have is the sasamoki sushi, and it is ayu sushi wrapped in bamboo leaf. I'm so used to things wrapped in a banana leaf. This might have been one of my first times eating something wrapped in a bamboo leaf. Oh, this smells like I'm walking in a bamboo forest. 
why don't things come wrapped in a bamboo leaf more often? I mean, pandas love them, and they're chubby and jolly. They may be onto something. Here is the are you wow look how pretty this is it looks like a little onigiri with just the most perfectly charred grilled piece of fish on top texture of the fish white very flaky sitting on a bed of rice a little bit of sesame perfect contrast and color Ooh. you can smell the fermentation a little bit Ah, oh, that just like made my mouth water big time. I have been given a green light to one bite this baby. Oh, that's just mind blowing. First of all, this rice is just incredibly fermented and it's got great vinegary flavor to it. And the fish is just all sorts of gentle and delicate. And the texture is flaky and it blends with the rice ever so lovely. The fish just kind of falls apart and just like, I don't know, mingles and dances with every single grain of rice. And there's like little bits of herbs in here. Just adds to that graceful aroma. It's, it's almost like the perfect food tango. All right, next is the main course. This is the grilled ayu. Although it looks simple, this is one of the hardest things to make perfectly because it's such a delicate fish. It could easily get overcooked or it could be undercooked. You really do need a master chef to make this. All right, I'm gonna just give it a tiny, they don't give you a big lemon wedge here because you're not supposed to add that much. A couple drops of citrus and you're supposed to eat it from the head of the fish. How you doing? How you doing? I like your face. Mmm. First of all, great smoky flavor. And again, that hint of floral fragrance just kind of emits itself from the fish. As soon as you put the meat in your mouth, you just get a nice subtle whiff of that. I've had many of fish in my day, never something like this before. So this is by far the cleanest fish I've ever had. Like, not even close. So competition, it'd be like Michael Phelps and me swimming in a lap together. It is just no contest. Such delicate meat. And I'm crunching through the bones here. I'm crunching through like the little middle bone. And it tastes like it's not even there. It tastes like it doesn't exist. It tastes like the fish shouldn't even like be horizontal. It should just be like droopy and warm like. I've never tasted fish this sweet before. No wonder it's called sweet fish. It tastes like I'm eating a fresh king crab or snow crab. No wonder in the land of fish that is Japan. This is the top prize. Next course, ayu tempura. Little bright ayu fish. You wanna see tempura perfection? Well, you can just like take any piece on the outside and it just snaps off quickly with just a beautiful subtle crunch. You know you got a good tempura. They give you a little salt and pepper dipping seasoning right here. Oh my God. Textures aside, again, a soft floral, sweet, flavor from the meat of the fish. When I crunched into the batter, I almost seemed like there's nothing inside. And that just goes to show you how amazing that texture of the fish is. Wow, that is so soft. Again, I've had clean fish before. Now you compare the cleanness of the fish, like when after I had Ayu, it tastes like the sweet, clean water from the Nagata River compared to like sewage slime. Wow, what a flavor combo. One of the most delicate, tender fish ever, ever. Okay, next we have the grilled ayu. This is really interesting because the sauce that's on the outside is that it looks like a little bit of soy sauce glaze, but it's soy sauce made from ayu fish. So the chef actually took fish and made soy sauce out of it. I don't know how this happens. This should be on, a, on an episode of Weird Science or something. And it's just caramelized on the outside of the fish. And you can eat it the same way and dip it in a little seasoning mm. oh i love this and this thing is pregnant there's the eggs right here and i feel kind of bad because i love this fish so much i wish these eggs all grew up so i can eat them all together after they become adults there's definitely more texture in this particular fish because of all the eggs and the soy sauce on the outside it tastes like a teriyaki sauce and the soy sauce had a baby it's sweet 
but not overly sweet, which is so much umami flavor. I can't, I can't believe it's made from fish. I don't know what I'm more impressed by, the fish or the sauce. And just having them both together. Next we have daikon plum sauce, and this is really interesting. On top of the little pieces of bread, this is the ayu that goes on ayu sushi. So kind of like what I had in the beginning, spread on top of this bread. And this particular one has all that nice miso, the guts, the guts, the innards of the fish, spread on top as well, mixed in with the meat. Wow, you spread this thing on oh, anything I'll eat it. You spread this thing on a, on a telephone pole. I'll take a big bite out of that sucker. Mmm, that would be amazing on a New York bagel. Just saying. Amazing. The richness of this flavor combined with that absolute sweet, creamy flavor from the fish. I'm so impressed by that. You know what this tastes like? It's really interesting. It tastes like almost like a cream cheese fish spread. You get that little fermented, little sourness, then it's just all creaminess. I don't know which one I like more. I think I might need to move here, eat this every day, and slowly make my decision. Ooh. White pepper. Oh, arigatou gozaimasu. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Ayu ramen. And it comes with a little bit of white pepper, a little shrimp, a little fish, pickles on the side. Look at this. This fish is split in half with the main bone taken out as I feel like more of a textural component here, being all nice and crunchy. It's almost like the fish just swimming in the Nagata River. God, this fish is good. And I know they didn't add any sugar to this fish, but you for sure taste that sweetness. If this fish ever came to my house, I would never ask it to take its shoes off, or if it ever used my bathroom, I would never even ask it to wash its hands because that's how clean it is. <laughs> this might be my favorite dish. I'm, I'm just saying, I, like, I, I love this thing roasted natural, but wow, this is just so good. Oh, you won't believe what's coming out next. I don't believe what's coming out next. Michelangelo will not like what's coming out next. It's an Ayu Kobe pizza. What? I mean, this guy is just a master of everything. Soy sauce, ramen, pizza, fish. What can't you do? Nothing. There's nothing. Um, um, excuse me, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna, it's, it's, there's, there's a little bit of Ayu on here. <laughs> Let's not waste this. You don't want me to go licking on this on this pizza cutter because I will, and that'd just be very uncivilized. So, oh look at this, so many ayu chovis, and look at the pizza itself. It's toasted, charred in just the right places. A little thin crust. I'm a New Yorker. I love pizza. I'm really picky about what kind of pizza goes in my mouth. Wow. First of all, mountain of the ayu fish sitting on top. Soft, it brings its own sweetness. We've already covered that. But then, the sauce that's on this pizza, there's a little bit of Parmigiana cheese and a little tiny bit of mozzarella. But what's insane about this pizza is that, remember that white cream that I wanted to spread over a bagel and my entire body, you know? He put that on this pizza. Now it's a concert. Like it was a party with just the IU fish and there's a ton of it on this pizza. But with the IU cream, we're jamming right now. We are. Since I left New York, I haven't had a good slice of pizza. And not saying this is like anything like a New York slice, but man, it gave me that New York peace of mind. You know what I mean? Hmm. It was for sure a flavor and texture roller coaster ride in the last hour. And I am so happy to be able to come to this region of Japan, to come to Gifu, go into the Nagata River, go fishing, have that entire experience, and then coming back and be able to try the most famous, the most precious food ingredients in this region right here. But anyway, I'm gonna share this and then maybe go sambuing, you know, take a walk, savor the final moments of this day.
You know why I love San Buing? After a short stroll, I feel like it's time to eat again. And my last final food item on this trip, little tea ice creams and pepper ice cream and chase it all down with a cup of hot tea. Tea ice cream is probably one of my favorite things. And pepper ice cream, spicy and sweet. Reminds me of someone I used to know. Not gonna get into that. Let's talk about happy things and good food. Anyway, the trip I've been on in the past week, something I've been looking forward to for so many months. We've been planning this for many, like almost a year now I've been planning this trip because I really wanted to get it out of the typical tourist cities like Tokyo and Kyoto. Even though I love those cities so, so much, I wanted to really explore the local cuisine, local culture, local food, meet the locals. And I definitely did that on this trip. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I was invited by Buy Food. Um, they brought me here, took me all around. It's a great company. Um, Sir Khan's the head of this company, really, really amazing guy. Thank you so much, man, for taking me around. And if you guys wanna to come to Japan, you wanna do anything from booking restaurants to cooking classes to going around on different tours and especially food tours. They're very focused on the food aspect of this country, which is something I love and that's why we're able to partner together. And it's also such a compassionate organization, like I mentioned before, a portion of their proceeds all go to children's charities around the world. So really nice group, really amazing organization. So if you wanna to come to Japan and wanna experience some of the same things I've done or do some other stuff, I'll put the information down below for you. Definitely check it out. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.